Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are going to play another round of Fix Me Roulette, uh, because it is the most productive way to deal with Fix Me's that I've ever had. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, continue. So the way we play is we get grep for um, Fix Me or to do, ignoring case in the Serenity code base. And then uh, we shuffle that so that we get one Fix Me. And as we can see here, we are choosing from 5,513 possible fix me's. Um, and the number keeps going up, but <laughs> that's just the reality of large software projects. I am confident that if we keep at it, then we will eventually make a dent. Um, so let's see what we are going to work on today. So that's going to be uh, in libweb, dom node. Fix me colon. Okay, well, that's mysterious. <laughs> um, hello. Fix me colon. Right. Atter. Set copies namespace. Blah, blah, blah. Clone node not implemented for attribute. Mm hmm. So we are in node clone a node. So I guess this is relating to uh, cloning a DOM node, which then has to do something different depending on what kind of DOM node you're cloning. Where is the to clone a node with an optional document and clone children flag. Okay, and then we implement this algorithm here. So we've already implemented lots of it. And I guess this is the part that's missing. So if it's an atter node here, then this is just a fix me. Okay. So set copies namespace, namespace prefix, local name, and value to those of node. Mm -hmm. So where are we making the copy? Copy is here. I guess we should be. Oh, this doesn't do anything right now. So it doesn't even instantiate an atter node, it seems like. Um, so it looks like it would just crash, actually, if you try to clone an atter node. So let's make a little test page for this. Uh, and then we can find out. So atter clone node. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll need something with an attribute on it. So <laughs> we'll make one uh, with an attribute foo that contains the string bar. Seems fair enough. Okay. And then we want to get the foo attribute. So uh, get document body get attribute node. Oh, man, I don't use these APIs typically. So I'm not sure exactly if I'm using them right. Let's see if, if we got the right thing here. So um, let's see. Okay, we got an atter node at least. That's good. Um, so we wanted to clone it. So if I clone this node, foo clone is foo dot clone node. Is that just going to fall apart? Clone node not implemented for attribute. Yeah, that's what we expected. I guess I was expecting also something to fall apart here. Um, because it's not setting copy to anything. It's returning a star copy. Um, why doesn't it crash? <laughs> ah. Um, console.log foo clone. Let's see what that says. Null. Okay. So somehow the null gets out safely here. 
fine, whatever, but uh, it's not supposed to be null, it's supposed to be an utter node. So if we open this in Firefox, and I guess look at the console, oops, where can we see the console? Yeah, so it's logging the utter node in both cases. Right, and the second one is a clone of the first one, of course. Okay, so I guess step one is to start cloning the node. This seems like the way the other ones clone the node is to like just create a new one and then set stuff on it, maybe. Yeah, just allocating a new one. So document type nodes, allocate a document type node, set name, set public ID, set system ID, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's try that. So, um, Atter, so we start by saying um, Atter copy is heap allocate Atter with realm, does that make sense? And what else do you want? You want the local name, the value, and your parent element, I guess. So the local name. Um, hmm. So we should be an adder. We already know, actually, because we just tested that. So we don't need to verify cast. We can just static cast. Um, like this, and then it should be okay to grab it from there. So local name, local name, value, and element. Owner element, I guess. Hmm. Although when you clone an Atter node, it's not owned by that element, I guess. It's just a freestanding Atter node, because you clone. if I clone the foo attribute node, it doesn't mean that the element now has two foo attributes. It just still just has the one, right? Because if we look at document body, yeah, it still just has the one, of course. So it shouldn't share the owner element. Um, so we say null putter for owner element. And oh, and I need to pass in the document as well. Uh, like that. Okay. So we're setting the local name, but we're never passing over the namespace and namespace prefix. Uh, maybe at our notes. We have the namespace and prefix here. Uh, they are part of the qualified name. So how do I set that stuff? Really, I just want to transfer the qualified name as is. Maybe what we do really need here is a separate constructor. Maybe that's what we really need is something that um, basically just takes another atter. Yeah, copy constructor, right? And okay, yeah, so let's have a copy constructor that um, this doesn't need to be static. It's, yeah, it's a clone helper. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then maybe all that we need to do is just say copy is at her um, copy is at her dot clone. All right. And then what does at her clone do? Uh, bum, 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 bum. My clone it really just has to do the copy construct business. So at her from this. Uh-huh. 
So you don't like this because you need the realm. Sure. Okay. And of course, we have to implement the copy constructor. So at her, at her. Maybe we don't. I'm just thinking, should we just not have a copy constructor? And do everything via this constructor instead? It's a little bit awkward. Maybe we can generalize. I, I don't want to have two constructors because it just makes things complicated. So let's generalize this constructor uh, and have it take a qualified name instead. Because then we can um, instantiate a qualified name up here in the create helper instead of doing it in the constructor initializer list here. So we will do something like uh, qualified name arguments, clickety clack. There we go. And then we move that in here. So qualified name. There we go. All right. And then we say adder is uh, create from document. Uh, or no, no, no we, we do this thing. Mm -mm -mm. Allocate with realm with document. And the qualified name, it's going to be a copy of our current qualified name. So just qualified name, current value and null putter for the owner element. Mm -hmm. You don't like it because requires one argument, but four were provided. Um, say what now? Mm -hmm. No matching constructor because of uh, this and that and that and this. So what am I trying to do wrong? Specialization. Uh, bum, 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 bum. First argument would lose const qualifier. Oh, you don't like that it's um, a const document that you're getting. So I guess... I mean, we don't, it didn't have to be const clone. We can also do that. That seems OK. All right. And then can we just do that? Yeah. Okie okay. So now we're cloning the thing. And might just work. Hmm. Wonder what this fix me further down is about. Set copies no document and document to copy. Wait, what? Set copies no document and document to copy. Oh, it's setting two variables. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit hard to read these comments when they have like italic text in the original and then we lose that when we copy. So here it says set copies no document and document to copy if copy is a document and set copies no document to document otherwise. I see. So that, I guess that's relevant if you're copying a document node or if you're cloning a document node, which is not what we're doing right now, but something that one might decide to do. It's kind of fun to um, go in the weeds of these ancient DOM APIs and uh, <laughs> see all the little details about how to implement them. Uh, OK, so atter clone node. Hey, we got an atter. And if we dump our DOM, our body still just has the one attribute. So that's positive. Um, I guess we could make the test better here. So. 
um, does the adder node expose its owner element via API? It has owner element API. That's great because then we can um, we can log things. So let's make this a little bit nicer to look at in the browser. Uh, we will make a little pre out maybe something like this a pre and then we can also work with um, you know we can we can work with uh, an element that we construct on the fly instead of using the body tag or the body element so let's see what we do um, let's do something like window dot onload so we get this when we're fully loaded and then wait i'm trying to do this uh, multi-cursor thing that people were teaching me on the um, <laughs> office hours one two escape and ooh, look at that pretty cool um okay so we want to create an element so we'll make an element e an element e uh, create element we'll make a div and then we will set some attribute on it so e set attribute foo to the text bar sure and then we'll get the attribute um, adder um, we'll get it from e okay and then we will clone that Okay, so now let's log these things that we got here. So um, we'll make a helper for logging. Uh, this is going to be a bit janky, but whatever. Um, hey, inner HTML plus equals. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite anti-patterns in actual web development. For, for tiny tests, it doesn't matter. But um, if you're doing this with a big DOM, then you're, you're asking the browser to do so much work because it has to um, serialize the old DOM and then append the new string to it and then uh, reparse the whole string that you give it. It's, it's a lot of work, but um, it, is, it is convenient for something like this. Very simple. So we'll just take a string like that. Uh, and then we will say at her, um, at her log. This is what I wanted to do. Oh, maybe we could even do something like this. Fancy, fancy. Clone. Okay. Right. And then uh, let's validate the or let's let's check the owner element. On both of these. Okay, yeah, so the first one has an owner element. The second one is a clone, so it does not. Uh, but it should have the same other observable things like the namespace, URI, the prefix, local name, name, and value. So let's, I guess we can dump all those. Uh, in fact, we can even make a helper for this. Dump at her. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Mm. Okay, so we're going to write ourselves a little thing that will do something like this. So, um, name plus name plus. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> okay. 
So we had local name. And we also had just name and we also had value. Okay. Um, dump clone. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, so it seems like everything transferred correctly. We also had, there's a specified thing. What is that? Specified. Specified. Return true. Always returns true. Okay, well, that's helpful. The specified getter steps are to return true. <laughs> it's probably something ancient that um, some website somewhere checks this thing, and therefore it can't be removed from the web platform. So it just stuck there forever, returning true. Um, but I guess we can be polite and dump it out. Okay. And then maybe we'll do something like this. Or just this, just so that we get a new line. Okay. And then let's see if it looks the same in Firefox, which it appears to do. That's very good. Um, bum, 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 bum. Very, very cool. Okay, so I feel like we have successfully cloned it. Um, maybe something that would be healthy to check for is uh, log atter uh, equal clone. Um, should not be uh, true. This shouldn't be strictly equal because they're two different object identities, right? So They're not that. Ooh, I wonder if we can do like a, there's a DOM um, has this equal, is equal node. Yeah, let's see what happens if we call that. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. We crashed. <laughs> uh, and this fella says true. This fella says true, and we crash on is equal node. So it seems like we have room to improve here because the test is crashing. Why do we crash is equal node? What do we do for attribute node? To do! Aha! So that's going to crash. We can probably implement that as well. Um, so let's take a look at the spec for is equal node. Okay, the is equal node method steps are to return true if other node is non null and this equals other node. Ha! Ah. So a node A equals a node B if all the following conditions are true. So they need to implement the same interfaces, which means that they are. I guess compatible types. Hmm. Right. They need to be implementing the same interfaces. Right. So they have to be the same node type, node name. I guess that kind of makes sense. It's a weird way of expressing it. Okay, so for Atter, we need to compare the namespace, local name, and value. So let's do that. So it's namespace, local name, and a value. Dun dun dun. Auto. This Atter is uh, verify cast. Atter. Uh, this. Okay, other. Okay, so if this adder dot namespace URI is not other adders namespace, then they're not equal. If this adder local name is not other adders local name. Oh no, 
not equal. And finally, <laughs> the uh, value has to be identical as well. Other at her value. If they're not, that's a false. Otherwise, we fall through, I guess. Otherwise, dash. Wait, what? Hmm. Oh, this is if you have children. But attribute nodes don't have children. I mean, in a technical sense, they can have text children, but um, but I don't think that's relevant here. So I guess we should just return true in this case. I don't know that we would need to continue. It seems like everybody else continues. So it's just written in that way because it checks the child count. And we will have a zero child count because we don't have children. Um, yeah, I, I think we can comfortably just short circuit return true here if they all these things match. But then again, we also don't have to get creative. Let's just do what the spec says. <laughs> and here we are. Now it is true. Equal node true. Cool. Also, that leaves a to do here for processing instruction node. Did, do we even have processing instruction? It is a type of node that we know about. And what did it say about those? It's target and data need to be the same. We have target. We don't have data. Oh, it inherits from character data. So we do have data. So we could implement that as well. Um, let's just do one thing at a time here. So let's let's write some commits. And uh, let's put this in our um, little uh, list of HTML tests. Okay. So step one was to add the cloning logic for Atter nodes. Yup, yup, yup. So we'll leave the is equal node improvement for the next one. Libweb add uh, or um, implement the cloning implement uh, node clone node for Azure nodes. Cool. And then we will implement is equal node. Implement node is equal. What's it called? Node is equal node. Is equal node, yeah. Uh, for Azure nodes, sure. Um, and then how can we even make a processing instruction? Create process, allocate processing instruction. The only way to make one is via the cloning algorithm. Seems like. Uh, <laughs> so how do I make a processing instruction? Create. Create pros, pro, pro, processing instruction. I barely know what that even is. I've never used them. Some XML thing. Uh, create processing instruction. Hmm. Document should have create processing instruction. Um. Okay. I mean, I guess if we want to test this, we need to add the thing. So let's just add the API. Oh, let's just add it, add it, add it, add it. So it goes under create comment, 
right here. Uh, seems okay. Sure, whatever. Let's let's make it happen. So document dot h create comment processing instruction. And it wanted a target and a data. Okie okay, okie. Okay. So that should be enough at least to get started on the build, which we can do, we can build a lot at the same time there. Okay. So how do we implement create processing instruction? It should be straightforward since we already know about the type. Probably it's just something like this allocate processing instruction realm this target data. Could it be that simple? If we include it, maybe it is. Wouldn't it be nice? I mean, it's not going to do anything interesting, but we could at least <laughs> find out if we can clone it. Um, wait, what's wrong with what I'm doing? libjs array.h? Oh, here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Document prototype. I probably needed to uh, import something. Uh, here, dom processing instruction dot IDL. Okay, so how can we test if this works? I guess processing instruction clone node. Um, I mean, okay. So that built, let's see if we can make one of these things. So we would just do like PI is document create processing instruction. I didn't validate anything when I created it. So um, probably going to leave a fix me about that. Here, yeah, it has some steps that we're supposed to validate and throw exceptions and stuff. So I guess really this should be a web IDL exception or like that because it can fail in various ways. So there's the link. And then we say fix me. So this is how we gain more fix me's. But I, um, <laughs> after some soul searching, I decided a couple of videos ago that it's okay to add new fix me's as long as we're making progress. Um, and removing older fix me's or making progress on older fix me's, it's okay to add new fix me's because uh, that's just the nature of software development. So these are going to be fix me's. And then, uh, because then somebody can go and and easily take care of those, and we leave some some yak bait for our future selves. Um, and then I guess you need me to be more specific in this case. So non old GC putter, can I do that? Is that good enough? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, so back to making a test for it. So we have to pass in target and data. So I guess I'll just say um, some target, some data, because I'm not even really sure what those things are. Uh, and then we will make a dump PI or dump processing instruction thing. 
and maybe we will clone it here too. So uh, let clone is pi clone node. Uh, and then what kind of APIs did it have? I mean, target and data, basically. So oops. So let's see. Target data. Okay, and then uh, PI and clone. And then we'll also check that they're not the same object, but that they are equal according to is equal node. <laughs> um, yeah, this is kind of a fun, fun little thing suddenly to involve ourselves with. So dump atter is not defined. Oh, yeah. Of course. Dump p. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Can we go again? Atter is not defined. Crash. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, well, that's going to be the to do and is equal node, I guess. So we still need to fix that one. So now we're here. And then what did we need to actually check for that? That was the is equal node thing. Let's just load it up. So is equal node for is equal node if they equal processing instruction target and data yeah 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 nothing complicated so just checking that um it's target and data this pi this processing instruction Oh, oh, what is this? What am I doing here? Look at that awful typo. I'm so sorry for everybody who already noticed that. Uh, that needs to be other node. Uh, okay, well, see, we caught it in time. Whenever I do this, there's always like a comment on the video saying something like, well, I'm only 20 minutes in, but if you didn't notice that you did that, then uh, you did that, <laughs> which I really, I really appreciate that people uh, leave comments about things that get messed up. Um, but especially like at the end of a video like this, uh, if you have comments on uh, something that is wrong or something that should be done differently, then uh, GitHub, the GitHub pull request is, is a, the ideal place to put that because uh, YouTube comments easily get lost because I get a lot of them every day and it's hard to uh, keep track of them and it's very easy for things to slip between um, between the chairs so to say so i really do appreciate when people bring their comments to github um, and uh, i guess to expand on that a little bit uh, the pull requests that i make here are they try to be very targeted so uh, i'm trying to solve like this set of specific issues. If you notice things that could be better, but are outside of the scope of what I'm doing here now, um, you're very welcome to work on those things and improve them. But uh, let's do that as like separate issues, separate pull requests, instead of sort of getting stuck in a, well, in sort of an, an infinite refinement loop, um, just because you noticed something while looking at this. So just if you spot something that could be better, that's not directly uh, within this scope, just open a separate issue, open a separate pull request, and uh, we'll, we'll do that too. Anyway, let's get get back to this. Um, right, so by the way, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna squash this into the previous thing eventually, but uh, we'll, we'll do this first. So if this processing instruction target is not other processing target, now that's a false. And if this processing instruction data is not other processing instruction data, then that's a false as well. Okay. So 
Can we run it? Can you dig it? It ran. Clone.target undefined. Okay, that's a little weird, but maybe it wasn't called that. So here it shows up correctly, some target. Um, processing instruction.idl target. Wait, why doesn't it end up in the right place? We're passing in the data. Wait a minute. Data target? They're in the... Um, is that the same order I was using? Target data. So it seems like they should be in reverse order at the very least. But what's going on here? Let's look in the constructor. Data target. Then we set target. Uh huh. Okay. So data goes first. Let's see, this is this kind of mistake that wouldn't have happened with Yacht because we would require the, um, uh, are either require the um, argument labels or that they have the same exact name as the argument or as the parameter. Ah, man, I am looking forward to using Yacht for stuff like this. Okay, so if I do that, I mean, shouldn't that just move the error? We're going to find out. We're going to figure it all out. Don't worry. Okay, so target is undefined. Character data. Wait, what? Why are you character data? You're supposed to be a processing instruction. Oh, we're not setting the prototype. Oopsie boopsie. Well, we have to set the prototype of these things. Like this. Wow, we're finding all kinds of interesting uh, things today. So that is fantastic, by the way. Because it means that our little engine is improving. Libweb bindings, processing instruction prototype. And what else do I need for ensure web prototype? Bindings intrinsics. Sure. Uh huh. Member access into incomplete type document. Libweb DOM document. We're almost there. Hey, look at that. <laughs> so they're not strictly equal, but they are equal according to is equal node. So more uh, fixes coming through. Let's see. So um, is equal node, I think that was the thing I needed to uh, patch up first with a little squash here. Yeah, so that's just um, amending to the previous commit. And then we will make sure that processing instruction has the um, the correct prototype set on new instances of processing instruction. Make sure processing instruction objects have the right prototype. Uh-huh. And then uh, we need to add the API for creating processing instruction. So I think that's going to be this code, right? Yeah, document dot uh, create processing instruction. Uh, document create processing instruction. These nodes don't really do anything interesting yet, but let's um, allow, <laughs> let's allow, let's allow creating them. Okay. And then um, implementing is equal node. Implement uh, node is equal node for processing instruction nodes. Cool. And then let's add those two tests that we made. Uh, so atter clone node 
and I'm just going to make sure that I'm just going to call it like this, actually. And we will bring this one over as well. OK. OK. Um, base add to um, test pages HTML test pages for uh, clone node for DOM clone node uh, functionality. Yes. Okay. So um, I think this would probably be a good time to cut ourselves off because we made some some nice progress here. Um, we started with a wait. Where's the original fix me? Uh, we started with a mysterious fix me colon in DOM node, and we did a bunch of stuff <laughs> to improve our DOM implementation. Uh, that's very nice. So this will be the end of the video. If you made it here, thank you so much for watching, for hanging out. I um, I hope that you saw something interesting today and um, maybe even became inspired to play Fix Me Roulette yourself. Or maybe you saw something that you wanted to improve in our DOM implementation or whatever. Uh, anything goes. Maybe you just want to fix some of your own Fix Me's. Uh, anything goes. But uh, I'm having so much fun making these, I have to say. Like uh, the thrill of uh, <laughs> the random task it's amazing. So I really hope that, that they're still interesting to watch. Um, because as long as they're interesting to watch, I think I'm just going to keep making them because it seems like the number of fix me's is, is um, it's not really, it's not really becoming a problem. We're not running out of them. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for hanging out. Let me know if you like the format. Uh, see you all next time. And Merry Christmas. Goodbye.